They said, no more will you run it. And I said, if I can't run it, I can't be here. And uh, so it wasn't the friendly parting. VJ reorganized with a new president, a former promotion man, Randy Wood. In the transition, a gold mine slipped through the cracks. <laughs> Beatles left BJ in August 1963, claiming their royalties weren't being paid. By January of 64, they signed with Capitol Records, the label that had turned them down a year earlier. That same month, their popularity exploded. But VJ still had the master tapes to 15 songs, and they believed they had the right to release them, so they did. Capitol Records sued. VJ didn't have the money to fight a long, drawn-out legal battle, so they settled. The label could continue to release its Beatles songs, but only till the end of the year. The Beatles made VJ one of the highest-grossing record labels in the nation. The company felt ready to take its place alongside the majors and moved its offices to Hollywood. At the same time, VJ's president, Randy Wood, made a critical mistake. He left Calvin Carter. VJ's ear back in Chicago. Wood tried to repeat the company's previous success with white pop acts, but he didn't have the instincts of Abner and Calvin and repeatedly signed artists that just didn't sell. I'll set my love to music. Within two years, VJ was near ruined. I was called back in 1966. I got a call from Vivian and Jimmy, and Jimmy said, Ab, I'm in real trouble, and would you come back and help me sort it out? And I said, yes. But when I got out there, there was a fleet of, of cars, Cadillacs and Lincolns. I mean, talking about spending money. I, 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 it, it, was, it was just going through the records, which is amazing to me. You know, it was amazing to me, and um, it was gone. And, and, and the people, uh, and the, all the people were gone. Abner was desperate, so he moved the company back to Chicago. He felt the label had one last chance. The Four Seasons still owed VJ an album. But the deal was, I couldn't listen to the album. I just had to take it sight unseen. I could take it without listening to it. Okay. And I, I said, should I, should I not? I said, okay, they're a big act, hot, I'll take it. Here they are, the Four Seasons! What they gave me was a live album. The songs that had been done before. But it was not the kind of album that was going to generate the kind of money that we needed. The label owed a million dollars in back taxes. BJ went bankrupt. I was really desperate when, when the judge said he was going to sell it off. That was very painful. That was one of, one of the darkest, most unhappiest days of my life. A raindrops. A few years later, Abner landed at Motown. Eventually, he became president of the company. Vivian went back home to Gary, Indiana, and took a job as a gospel DJ. Jimmy tried to start another label, but it failed. Calvin Carter continued to produce records, but never again matched the success he had at VJ. I'm so all alone. For those of us in the community, you know, they were our champions. They were the best and we made the best records and we had the best music and we gave the best parties and, uh, i mean it was the best chicago's r b labels pumped out hits long after vj was gone but as their success increased so did the competition from corporate america when the majors started to smell uh, money in r b and black music um they began producing it, it, you know, using their, their big uh, bankrolls, buying masters for much more money than we would. And they had promotion men, teams of them, they would get their, their records on black radio. So the more, more of their records that went on, the less room there was for these small independent labels. In 1969, Chess Records, the flagship of Record Row, was sold to an audio tape company. Time marched on, um, people all over the country and all over the world began making uh, you know, R&B music, and it just eluded it. 
and, and the pioneers began to die or lose interest or they got rich or they got broke. My brother was tired. He was tired and, and, and I could see it. Leonard's death in 1969 foreshadowed the fate of Record Row. One by one, they began to shut their doors. First the leaners, then the new owners of Chess, and in the mid-1970s, the last R&B company on South Michigan Avenue closed its doors. The vibrant recording industry on Record Row was gone, and with it, an R&B community that drove the sound of the black experience across the color line, changing the world of music forever. If you stay, stay darling, stay in my corner. A record is, it's your footprint in time, it's your footprint in sand, and these artists have left some magnificent ones, and, and uh, that's a piece of a guy or a girl's life, and that's their best effort. That's their best effort, and we were able to put it out there, make it available to those who wanted it, you know, to spread it out there, and that's, that's a good feeling. I like that stuff.